Welcome to Fresh Catholic, a podcast for those who are converting, reverting, or simply want a fresh perspective of the Catholic faith to help them to open their hearts and minds to become closer to the love and goodness of Christ. My daily prayer is that I will be a bright light to others, to be filled with the love and light of Christ, so that when people look at me, they see Him radiating out from me for His glory. Hello and welcome. I'm Lori Balderas, and I'm so happy you're here. Well, hello, Simon. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. It's a crazy day around here today. I feel like we say that every single time. (laughs) Well, it's been crazy for a while. The days go by quick and crazy. Yeah. So so this episode today is going to kind of be like an update episode on a couple of things. So we, not right in the beginning, but we're going to discuss our missionary adventure. Um, We're going to give people an update on that. Okay. So we're going to put a pin in that. So stay tuned for that. And just to remind you, Simon and I had decided we were going to go on a missionary trip around the United States in a fifth wheel, traveling around and checking out the Catholic churches and seeing what their needs and you know, the good and bad that were happening at these Catholic churches and being able to create content on the road. So we're going to give you an update on that a little later. But first, we want to tell you about some really exciting news that just has happened in what, like the past less than a month. Yeah. Okay. So we get approached by a lot of people, Yeah. a lot of companies, a lot of people, and we have to really discern what they're offering or what they're asking of us or things like that, because we just have to be, you know, we have to be safe about things. And we got approached by a travel company called Trinity Travel. I'm sorry, I'm going to get this wrong already. I got to refer to my notes. Trinity Tour Travels. I always want to say it backwards. Hmm. I just call it the triple T's. Okay. Anyway, we we heard from this lovely woman named Kayla, and she wanted to know if we were interested in partnering with that company to do a fresh Catholic pilgrimage. Yeah. And I was like, what does that mean? What what does that entail? Did you know what a pilgrimage was? Oh, yeah. Of course. I've been wanting to do one for a long time. Oh, okay. So I didn't know what it was, and I know my daughter asked what a pilgrimage was Mm -hmm. and maybe I gave her the wrong information but I said a missionary in my mind a missionary trip is kind of like you're going to do a certain task and you're maybe doing service for others or building a church or doing things like that is a missionary trip but a pilgrimage how would you describe a pilgrimage it's more of a physical and spiritual journey you go to holy places and you can pray in a, you know, a church hundreds of years old. You can go with a group of people to mass every day. It's a it's a real um, kind of like a retreat, a spiritual retreat in a way. Like and a traveling all, retreat. A traveling ret- retreat, but you go to all these special places like the Holy Land, and this is where Jesus walked. And, you know, there's the road to Santiago, which I want to do someday. There's all kinds of pilgrimages. Right. So... So when they reached out to us and offered us this, you know, to do a fresh Catholic pilgrimage, we, well, immediately I, I Googled the company and, and went to see where, where they go and they go to amazing places. And so after talking to Kayla and setting up a meeting with Eddie, the owner, we got, you know, all the nitty gritty of it all. And we, they, they opened it up and said, where would you like to go Mm -hmm. on your uh, pilgrimage? So what we chose was the shrines and Eucharistic miracles of Italy pilgrimage. Right. So we are doing it. Oh my gosh, Uh we're doing it. And it's specifically Next year, in 2025, September 29th through October 9th, which is so exciting. And so we we had to have this meeting with Eddie and Kayla so that they could explain to us what the pilgrimage would entail. And it's an 11-day pilgrimage, which is very exciting. And 
they also said that we needed to have a priest come along with us. So they would either provide us with a priest or we could invite a priest we knew. So first, first person that popped into my head was Father Matthew McGill. And for those of my listeners who are local to our area here and go to Our Lady of the Assumption Church in Ventura, you certainly know who Father Matthew McGill is. And for my listeners, he's been a guest on our show. He did an episode on the priesthood. And so go check that out. But we texted him and and I said, would you want to go on a pilgrimage with us? And he texted back, when and where? <laughs> <laughs> And so after he checked with his pastor to get permission, Father Matthew's going with us on this pilgrimage. So we're very excited Mm -hmm. to have him come along. He is just, he's a young priest. He loves to travel. He, I feel he's a very beautiful, strong, firm, loving priest. And I think he will just make the trip just a really beautiful experience. So I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. So a few things about this um, this pilgrimage is, one thing is, this isn't just open to the parishioners of our parish, Our Lady of the Assumption in Ventura. And it's also not just open to Father Matthew's parish, which is St. Joseph's in La Puente, California. This is open to all of our listeners in 58 countries so the beauty of this pilgrimage is because we do have you know listeners just all over the world Mm -hmm. so what kayla and eddie the owner was saying is let's say we have listeners i know we have listeners in canada listeners in australia listeners in europe and america of course and canada so so every so all these listeners we will meet in rome That's the first stop. So you don't have to be from here. We don't have to travel together the entire time. We can all meet in Rome, which I think is super cool. Okay. You think, okay, you think that's cool? I don't know. Yeah. You're like, okay, whatever. Yeah. So what? (laughs) I think that's pretty cool. So that they all don't have to travel to LA to fly with us. Right. We meet in Rome. Yeah, we have a central meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like a group where you're just getting on a bus, going to the airport, and and traveling together. There there will be, at least locally, um, people flying with us from Los Angeles. Right. Because hopefully we do get people from our parish and Father Matthew's parish, Mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. But this is open to all of our listeners, which is really, really cool, I think. So I just... I'm going to tell you about some of the itinerary, but what I encourage you to do is go, we're going to put links in the show notes, right? Mm -hmm. So that people can click on the links and it'll take you directly to this pilgrimage so you can see what it's all about and what it entails, even though I'm going to tell you a lot today. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about the trip, of like a nutshell version of it, so you can see why I especially am so excited. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, you're excited down deep, right? Yeah. Okay. I I think it's going to be a thrill a minute. So anyway, um, we're going, I'm going to come back in just a couple minutes. We're going to take a little pause here and I'll come back and tell you some of the itinerary. Be right back. Have you been to freshcatholic.com yet? Our website? Oh my goodness. If you haven't, make sure you go there right after I'm done here. I want to tell you about everything we have going on there. We have the podcast is there if you don't can't find it anywhere else. We also have a blog, Fresh Catholic Comics. We have an online store with faith-based merchandise. It's all very exclusive to Fresh Catholic. We also have coffee that we're selling. Coffee, can you imagine? Fresh Catholic coffee, 17 flavors. It's roasted and shipped on the same day. You can get save some for yourself, give it as a gift. It helps us out with our mission. We also have educator Charles Merritt is doing a whole series of things on our website. So we have, he did a series on sin, one on angels, one on the Our Father, one on the Hail Mary. And they're just coming, he's coming up with new ideas all the time. And he also is doing a Bible study right now. He's studying the gospel of Mark. You don't want to miss it. So if you're behind on all those things, they're there for you to see and share with your friends. So check it out. 
and we're back. So again, this is an 11 day, nine night tour. Okay. A pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Rome for three days, which I'm so excited about because interestingly enough, prior to this, this interaction with Kayla and Eddie, I had been praying, Lord, Lord, please, I've got to go to the Vatican before I die. <laughs> and a month later, I get this call. Boy, thank you, Lord. I'm going to start being really specific like that. He might just start answering my prayers more readily. Anyway, so we go to Rome for three days. We're going to go to the Basilica of St. Paul outside of the walls, which is the burial site of St. Paul, which is really cool. We're going to go to St. Peter's Square and have, I guess they call it a pap pap papal audience mm -hmm. with the Pope, hopefully, God willing, if he's there and well. That's exciting. We get to go to Vatican Museums and um, St. Peter's Basilica. So I'm very excited about that. I think that will be super interesting, exciting. I mean, I see all this in pictures, but I've never, well, I've never been to Italy, first of all. Let's just state that. You have, right? Mm hmm I have. How many times have you been to Italy? I've been there a couple of times. I've been to the Vatican. It's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. quite an experience. But, but before, when I went to Italy and, and the Vatican, I wasn't a practicing Catholic. Mm -hmm. So I'm going now with a different lens and a different sort of reverence for the Vatican and everything that's in it and around it. And it's going to be really cool. I know. It's going to be super cool. And I'm Italian. My dad's full Italian. I've never been to Italy. My brother has a house there. I've never been to Italy. I'm so excited to go. I'm already learning Italian, so bear with me on that. And you're you kind of know some Italian. Mm. Or you're gonna you're gonna learn faster than I am because he's really good at languages. But anyway, so we start off in Rome for three days, and then we travel south to Monte Cassino, the first house of the Benedictine Order. Benedictine? Benedictine. Benedictine order. Order. And then we are also going to San Giovanni Rotondo, which is the home of Padre Pio. You've got to be excited about that because yeah. you're a huge fan. I am. I, I, you know, reading his book, I know that he was there for a really long time. And he, it's, I think it's way out there. It's in the hills somewhere. And it's kind of a, it's a, it's a monastery. It's a, re, you know, a, a uh, kind of out of the way. Right. And then we get to attend mass in his beloved church. Right. How exciting is that? Oh my gosh. And then we're also going to Monte St. Angelo, which is the grotto of St. Michael, where he is said to have appeared in 490, 492, and 493. And we'll have mass in the grotto. Awesome. Mass in a grotto. I love St. Michael. Isn't that cool? Then we're going to Lanciano, which is the church of St. I don't even know how you say that name. Uh, you don't know where you're at. Oh. St. Uh, Long Longinius, mm -hmm. the site of what many believe is the greatest Eucharistic miracle of the Catholic Church. In the 8th century, a monk offering Mass was said to be plagued by doubts regarding transubstantiation. I can't, I'm so sorry I messed that up. Transubstantiation. Well, at pronouncing the words of consecration, the host was miraculously changed into flesh and the wine into blood. Right. So we are going to that church where that happened. Oh my gosh. Then we're going to Loreto. Here within the Basilica, there's going there's a visit to the beautiful Madonna of Loreto and Holy House of Nazareth. Tradition maintains that this is the small house where the word became flesh and where Mary was born, raised, and greeted by the angel Gabriel. It is said that this is where Mary proclaimed the Magnificat in the home in which Jesus was raised and where the Holy Family lived. According to tradition, angels carried the Holy House to its current location to keep it safe. Okay, I was, I'm confused. So, so that house, they took they the, house. the house okay. to Italy. Got it. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't know that. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that, a, that has got, I'm, this is what I'm fascinated by. 
all these places, when we go into them, I just have a feeling that they're gonna we're gonna physically have a sense of these miraculous things mm -hmm. that have happened. Yeah. I don't know how you couldn't. Yeah, I know, you know, there are a lot of uh, healing p pilgrimages where people go with expectation. If they have ailments, if they're suffering in some way, that they are hoping to be healed in some way. So, yeah, people go and they have all kinds of mir miraculous experiences. I know. I think, I mean, I'm just imagining even the first time I ever went into a Catholic church, just the feeling I had. And like Deacon Donna said, well, you walked into the church and Jesus was actually in there. You're bound to feel different. Right. And that's how I feel about these places. It's like just even thinking about it, I'm getting excited and chills because I'm thinking, how could you walk into these places and not feel something? I mean, you're all, everybody's going to have their own personal feelings and thoughts and, and reactions. And I think that's a part of the beauty of going on a pilgrimage is that like Kayla, when we were on the phone call with her, she was saying, you can't go on a pilgrimage without it changing your life. Mm or without it changing you in some way, or having a profound response to what's going on. I mean, I'm just like super excited about the anticipation of it all. Mm -hmm. Not with the expectations of like, oh, something better happened or I want my money back. <laughs> not like that, more like just with the expectation that how could you not have a beautiful reaction, you know? Right. I think it's yeah. gonna be, like you're saying, you've you've been to Italy before with one set of circumstances or one mindset yeah but with when you go on a pilgrimage and you all have that same mindset of you're going to a holy place you're going to be praying a lot you're going to be attending mass you're going to be in these places with these relics or you know um these these things that have happened and it's if you if you have your open heart and your hope open mind to to jesus you're gonna it's going to be a, just an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Like, a just, you can't replace that, I wouldn't think. It's very exciting. Then we're going to head to Assisi for three days, which is also, you're a big fan of St. Francis, yeah. so you've got to be excited. This is kind of a Simon Balderas pilgrimage. <laughs> <laughs> Getting to go to these places with, for these saints that you really are mm -hmm. interested in. So we're going to go... Um, we're going to go to a basilica of St. Francis and it has a lot of his personal possessions. We're going to visit the final resting place of St. Francis and also the main square and visit the birthplace of St. Francis. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And when you say that we're going to see his personal possessions, I don't think he had very There much. are some there. Yeah. <laughs> He might have had like a walking stick. And, okay. Yeah. So those are his personal possessions. <laughs> I know. I didn't say there was a whole bunch of them. And then we're also going to go to Laverna, where St. Francis received the stigma stigmata in 1224. Mm. That's intense. Yeah. Interesting. And both he and Padre Pio had yeah. a stigmata. Do they say a stigmata or stigmata? Stigmata. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anyway, and then we'll round out the trip back in Rome, visiting a multiple of beautiful churches, cathedrals, and basilicas before we head back. What a dream come true. Yeah, yeah it's going to be really cool. And as we're doing this, we are also going to be filming. We're going to be um, broadcasting your podcasts even still in Rome or wherever we're at in Italy. So it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> but right. it's also going to be a good experience, I think. Too. Well, and we asked Eddie, the owner, if, if it would be okay if we recorded the podcast while on this trip, if we filmed, because we're going to be working on a documentary. And he said, of course, you know, sounded great. And so whoever comes with us, you know, you're going to be a part of movie magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And also, you know, whoever's interested in recording the podcast with me while we're there, we will set that up because I, I would like to be able on that trip to get people's just feelings and thoughts and responses as they're happening because I think it, it is going to be really impactful. It is going to be something that, you know, I just, I think it's going to draw more people to the faith and more people to the church. 
and closer to Christ. And I think it's it's wonderful. So I'm going to tell you more in just a couple minutes. We'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in today. We really appreciate you being a loyal listener. I want to remind you that in addition to our weekly topic episodes, I also do Fresh Catholic Daily, the daily mass readings. They're nice and short, five to seven minutes, perfect for your drive to work or school or while you're cooking, cleaning, on a walk. So tune into those, get your daily dose of Jesus. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and I do little short videos every day. So tune into those, tell all your friends, subscribe please, rate and review. We really would appreciate it. I'm just trying to draw people to the Catholic faith or back to the Catholic faith. Help me to do that, won't you? And we're back. So even though I want you to go to Trinity Tour Travel's website and look at our our personal itinerary is on there already. Yeah. So if you go to upcoming pilgrimages, you click on that and you'll see Lori Balderas. Click on that and it'll show our itinerary. And also you could go to, you could just look up the Italy Eucharistic Miracle Pilgrimage also. That has the itinerary also. But let me just give you some of the highlights so you know what this this trip entails. So again, it's 11 days, nine, nine nights. The p- price package includes round trip airfare, which is amazing. It includes four star hotels, double occupancy. There's also a provision if you wanted single occupancy. It's a little extra for that, but double occupancy is included in the package. Ground transportation, gratuities, daily mass, Catholic tour guides, all admission fees, all breakfasts, most dinners, and I would say that's a lot mm-hmm. included. Yeah. Because basically it's it's all inclusive. So you can just go and enjoy your trip. You don't have to be worrying about you know, where do we have to pay for things? What do we have to pay for? You just get to go enjoy and focus on what you need to focus on and let the tour company handle everything else. I know that's what we want to do. Right. I mean, we want to be, you know, capturing all this too, but we want to go and just be focused on on the pilgrimage and on um, the beautiful sites and just the meaningful things that we're getting to do. And there's going to be time for free time and you can go out and explore what you want to explore as well. Um, and I think a lot of that's planned at lunchtime. You can go out and get your own lunch if you want or walk around, explore. Right. And they did say that they do keep it very well scheduled, but it's it's not, it's 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 uh, planned out in a very doable, meaningful way. It's not like they're cracking a whip. It's 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 done in a very nice way. And, and they I think they take time to make sure that we're, getting to really absorb what's going on, which I love. So we will have links in the show notes and check out their their website. And I hope that you will pray about it and sign up and come with us. Boy, would we love to have our listeners on this trip. I just, I think it would be just uh, the most memorable thing to do together. I'm hoping this is the start of many adventures with this travel company. Um, there's so many places I would love to go and experience these things. And honestly, just to be honest with our with our listeners, Simon and I struggle with a lot of things financially. And this is just a miracle that this has been presented to us because there's so many places we would like to go. And this might be the only way we get to do it. And what better way? Mm-hmm. What better way than to go on a pilgrimage and just um, experience these things. So I hope you agree with us and I hope that you will join us and we have a nice amount of time to plan, you know, if there's a deposit that you put down and then you can, you know, pay, I don't know, that's not up to me. That's a, that's a Trinity tour travels uh, thing to uh, look at, but I think it's very doable because you have plenty of time to plan. Mm -hmm. So I hope you join us and So that's all about that. And now we would like to talk about our missionary adventure. Okay. So we, like I already gave you a little heads up on what our plan was. So Simon, tell tell the listeners what we've done thus far with our missionary adventure, the steps towards it. Okay. Well, a lot of research. I do a lot of research on, you know, 
everything from what we're driving, what we're living in, where we're going, the routes we're going to take, and that sort of thing. So we've taken the first initial step, which was buying a vehicle that can tow a fifth wheel because the fifth wheel is about 40 feet long. It's a basically just a home on wheels. It's a small home on wheels. And we are excited about that. We've been looking at all kinds of fifth wheels all over the place. I've been looking online. We've visited a few places to look at some. And we were pretty close to making a purchase. And then we realized we had to kind of put the brakes on a little bit. We just didn't have everything lined up exactly. So we're still looking for that part of it. Right. And and when we started this idea, everything has been kind of falling into place. And I always take that. I know you don't like to say we look at signs. I do. And it would be like, you know, we had our van and the van sold in a day. And we were able to take that money and get the truck. And the truck, that happened very quickly and very easily. And, you know, everybody's been so accommodating and generous and nice about, you know, working with us. And we got the truck and then this fifth wheel idea came up and you have been researching it, but we weren't really going to get one for another few months. Right. And then one kind of dropped into our lap and we were literally headed out. Like today, we were supposed to be picking up our fifth wheel tomorrow, and it didn't work out, and I cried a little bit, Mm -hmm. to be honest with you, just because we were kind of really close to this, and this is something that we're excited about because we want to kind of take our mission on the road, and, and we just have this plan and this vision, and... I cried a little bit, but then we realized it, it wasn't at the right time. And there's a reason, and we don't need to even know the reason. It's okay that God is in charge of it. And so it doesn't mean the missionary trip's over, right? It doesn't mean our adventure's, like, never going to happen. It means it's we are actively just moving forward, like we've always said, with, with God's blessing. Yeah, I mean— we all make plans. We have to plan. We have to, you know, make all of these decisions, you know, some of them months in, in advance. And, but God sometimes has other plans. Right. So we have to be open to adjusting to that. So, you know, whenever I have a dream or whenever I have a, a, a an idea that I want to pursue, I'll put some energy into it. But I'm always in the back of my mind saying, you know what, God might have something different in store. And he might. Right. He, right. So... Right. You know, I think as long as you are open to where he wants to put you, go ahead and make plans, but just be open for, you know, being kind of fast on your feet and making adjustments. Right. And and this has been like, it's it's really not taught me a lesson because I feel I know this lesson about that, that God, God's in charge. When things do run smoothly, it, it always does make me think, oh, this is meant to be. And I feel good about that. But then when we realized we weren't going to go pick this fifth wheel up, you know, I I did have that little moment, but then immediately I was fine. I was at ease because I know God's in charge and, and I could tell it was a definite, we, we were staying home Mm. and I think we both just said, okay, well, we're just, you know, I, I love that, that we're in that spot. Yeah. I guess for me, it was a little deflating only because. I put a lot of energy yeah. into this and I put a lot of energy into negotiating a price and this and then going back and forth and right. everything was going great and right. it was super transaction. We just had to put a pause on it. But, right. you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm not bummed out like I, <laughs> I guess a little, but I just had to, it took me a moment. I'm a little slower than you. Right. Yeah. But I think we're okay. We're licking our wounds a little bit. It's okay. Yeah. It's going to be okay. And again, it just makes us just put our, you know, we surrender our life to the Lord. Yeah. And he knows exactly what our future plans are. Yeah. And that's why, you know, like this, this pilgrimage, I mean, God willing, we'll go on the pilgrimage. I just have every, I have every thought that it's going to happen and we're going and I'm so excited because again, it's all for the Lord. It's like going with like-minded people who all have a similar love of God, who want to go and just 
experience these beautiful things. Yeah. I, I just think that I can't imagine why God wouldn't, you know, ha have that happen on our missionary trip. Maybe we're going on that in one way we think, and maybe we're going on a missionary trip in a different way. Right. We're not quite sure, but we are very open to it. And I, I love that we both have that same feeling because if one of us didn't, that would be a problem. Yeah. So I think it's the it's the desire to want to create things for the Lord to draw people to the Lord and, and back to the church and all those things. So so we're just being patient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, um, let's see. Anything else that you want to tell everybody? Like any news that we have about updates on on anything? I'm trying to remember if there's anything else we need to tell people. Um, well, I'm putting on a new series that was uh, done by Charles Merritt about sacraments and grace. It's a five episode series. It's oh, wow. all really good. It goes through all of the sacraments and you know, we set up in the beginning of it uh, what what grace is and how that really flows through all of the sacraments. It's really quite informative. It's not a super, super deep dive into each sacrament, but it's, you know, a good five hours of sacraments and grace. So it's it's pretty detailed. That's great. For that. Yeah. We're getting quite the library on our website. We are. Yeah. So if you haven't gone to watch any of Charles series, man, you're going to have a busy fall and winter catching up on all that because you guys are just still going, 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 going yeah. strong. And they're becoming more and more popular, which is great. He also has the gospel of Mark. Yeah. So we've done Almost the whole book of Mark, we're on the last chapter. Oh. Chapter 15 will be the last one. And yeah, it's been going really, really well. It's it's a journey. And the way that he presents it, it really comes alive. It's really cool. That's great. I love it. So check all that out. And then, um, of course, our weekly topic episodes, we have some more guests coming up, which is exciting. Um, I have like somebody who is, I've been trying to get in this chair for the entire time I've had this podcast and I'm not going to tell you who it is. It's a surprise <laughs> because I kind of don't believe it until they're sitting here. So uh, <laughs> anyway, and I might even have them for two episodes. Yeah. So that's very exciting. I have other guests as well. So we're just going on with that. The daily mass readings are wildly popular, so I'm glad I started those. Mm -hmm. And we added in the act of spiritual communion to the daily mass readings. Um, I had a request for that because there, uh, the gentleman came to me and said, you know, many of the people listening to the daily mass readings obviously aren't going to mass mm -hmm. for one reason or another. And he just thought that would be a nice addition to the people who couldn't um, receive communion and receive the Eucharist. So we added that in. Right. Right. So I think, I don't think I have anything else to add. I just, I'm, I'm just super excited about our future. Yeah. I'm super excited about this pilgrimage and I really am excited to meet my listeners on this trip. So I'm hoping that you come join us. There is plenty of room on this trip and I know it's capping out at 45 people um, they can do more than that but I ask that we do uh, 45 because I didn't want to divide the group I'd like us to all go do everything together as a group mm -hmm. so 45 is the magic number and so I hope you come join us please 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 and just go to the website click on all of it. If you have any questions, I think they even have a frequently asked questions thing. Um, we will be getting more information to you as it comes in, but hope, hope you sign up. Hope you come with us. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. Thank you, Simon, you're for welcome. coming today. You're, you're welcome. I know the second we get off here, he's going to hit the ground running. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Thank you for joining me today. Now go out and be a bright light in someone's life. And remember, be focused, be faithful, and be fresh. Fresh Catholic is produced, edited, and recorded in Ventura, California.